The following podcast is sponsored by Words and Pictures Comics, located at 2610 Center Street, number 6. Words and Pictures is your one-stop shop for vintage back issues and cutting-edge graphic novels. Awesome service, great shop, check them out. Welcome everyone to episode 243 of Just Joshing. I am your host, Joshua Pentaloresco. I write stuff and podcast too. Today my guest is Reed Fisher. Reed, he does lots of sketch cards for Marvel Comics, but he also serves in the reserves. He's a really interesting dude. We, we have a really fun little conversation here about comics, art, all that stuff. It's it's really, really fun. Uh, I got a lot to talk about in, at the episode. I'm going to say most of it to the end, so if you want to talk about it at the end, we can, but... For, Words and Pictures has provided me with yet another graphic novel. It is Suiciders by Lee Bermijo and Matt Hollingsworth, courtesy of Vertigo, D.C. Uh, if you guys want to have me send this to you anywhere in North America, for sure, just put your name on the mailing list. Uh, there's a mailing list address at the, at the bottom of each episode with the contest on with a contest on there. So all you gotta do is put your email in. I do a drawing Wednesday night and the point as I prep for the Thursday episode. And when I do that, uh, when I, I'll have a winner. Uh, Crystal Donnelly won last week. Uh, she was the winner. She's based out of Snowflake, Arizona, my first United States winner. So maybe more more entries will come here. Um, yeah. I think we're going to get to the conversation now because I got a lot to talk about when this is over. So we'll get to that at the end here. All right. Take care of yourselves. Actually, I'm going to run thing. So I'm with Reed Fisher here at Tim Hortons on a very cold day. How are you doing today, man? Doing okay. Yeah. So, from I interviewed a friend of yours, Lane Neal, and he talked and told me that you are a like freelance artist illustrator. So yeah. how'd you get into that? Uh, I started drawing when I was six, and uh, the last I don't know, a couple decades or whatever, you know, the the, the comic shows getting bigger and whatnot. Um, I started uh, started actually kind of pushing on my artwork or whatever in my 20s um, as my kid was getting old enough I could do some of that so yeah we just uh, I just kept uh, kind of just you know you work at it whatever and and, 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 uh, and whatnot but I've always been into comic books and stuff like that so what kind of what, what comics you don't mind my asking uh, it's hard to say um, I read a lot of you know you, you know your core shit uh, Batman Spider-Man Superman stuff like that um, I have I have a real affinity for the classic guys and whatnot. Um, I'm also a big Will Eisner fan. Um, Eisner's awesome. Yeah, and, and and when I was a kid, it was like you know, especially in the early '90s, you followed a lot of the artists, yes. so your Jim Lee's and your Todd McFarlane's and shit. But uh, as uh, as I got older, um, I started following more stuff like uh, Michael J. Straczynski or whatever. Um, his stuff on Spider-Man, you know, like different writers, right? And yeah. Because you know, you know, you're like, what's the story, right? As well as the art. Because um, I mean, uh, they, they really have to complement each other, and it really bothers me when you get a, you know, you get a cover that's like, you know, like an Adam Hughes cover, but then the inside is some, you know, whatever artist, and it's like, yeah, this doesn't even suit the character there, at all. There, there, there's a comic company that's really notorious for that. They have these amazing covers, and they would like, you read, look in the interiors. The art's not bad. But it's such a, it's yeah, it's such and, a and, and DC's been a pretty, you know, can be pretty bad for that sometimes, and. And whatnot, and that being said, you know I'm a big DC guy, but uh, you know every once in a while, yeah, they'll have a, like a really awesome cover, and then the inside's like whatever, and you're just like, eh. well, I, I mean it's part of the grinding. You're, you're trying to bang out comics on a monthly basis, or yeah. in some cases a bi-weekly basis, yeah. which is and, and it's and, and in the '90s, I mean these guys were fucking stars, right? Yeah, yeah. And now it's you know I mean yeah, there are stars in, in, the, in the business. But they're they're the guys who, you know, were were, were they're, they're they're still leftovers from another period, you know. Pretty, I don't find a lot of really uh, not that there isn't, but uh, you know, it's, it's I'm pretty picky about my artists now. It, it, it it's different today. Like back, like I mean, I th- it's a lot more work today to actually put a comic book together because there's a lot more detail put into a lot into a lot of different things, and especially on the art side of things, like there's like coloring is such a big difference between what you saw in like the 70s, the 80s, the 90s. It's a lot more, well, with the computer graphics and stuff, you can do a lot more. Yeah, exactly. It's a lot more in-depth, so it takes a lot longer to do one. It's also, it's a lot more of a collaborative effort. Like, I remember, like, I have some, like, I'm a big Magnus Sword Left Fighter guy. I love the old Russ Manning style books. That is such a uniquely iconic look. But you'd see a Magnus comic today, it's, I mean, it's still, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a Magnus Robot Fighter comic book, but it's not, it's almost like completely differently. They're not the same, yeah. 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 So, 
So what do you read now? Or are you still reading? I'm not reading any uh, monthly stuff anymore just because I feel that uh, as much as I love comics, they don't grow. So, I mean, the only thing I think I bought was that Batman... Uh, I don't know the title. Libra Mio there and, and Azarello there, they... they their last little outing there where everyone got pissed off at Batman's uh, yeah, that, 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 yeah, which I thought was I, I understand kind of both sides but uh, I'm you know as, a, as an adult reader I'd rather read adult stuff and, and Batman I always thought would be really great in Vertigo or at least have just a title in Vertigo whether it's canon or not I don't care just stories like the Batman black or whites you know you just have stories um and uh, but anyway, th- every time this team gets together, the, the artwork's just beautiful. The story's pretty awesome, and uh, and and I look forward to it. So, um, and I was looking forward to that, and then it's like, oh, by the way, there's all this other controversy about it, and I was like, oh, okay, well, whatever, right? That doesn't really matter. As long yeah, as, you, as, yeah, yeah, as long think. as long as you enjoy the story, that's really what, that's well, awesome. and that's it, right? And so, um, so yeah, like I'll get stuff like that, or I'll get uh, you know the release something like Birthright, or the release. Uh, the, the Marvel Mythos stuff or, or the, the, the color stuff like the, the Spider-Man Blue or something. Yeah. There'll be stuff like that. Like once that kind of comes out and they, they say, hey, we're going to do that. I was like, all right, I'll do that. Um, then, then I'll go and get that. But I don't do any monthlies anymore. I don't, uh, I can't be bothered with monthlies. Um, I was reading Ghostbusters for a little bit there. Uh, Smart book. I, I enjoy yeah. it, yeah. yeah. And I just, uh, I kind of fell behind, but but uh, but I, I do I do enjoy uh I do enjoy stuff like that too. Anything nostalgic like that sometimes too, you know. You know. Yeah. Um, my nostalgia kick right now is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. It, it's it actually also is a really solid, solid comic book. It's probably like, I know it's not a DC or Marvel book. It's probably my favorite superhero style yeah, yeah. book every month because it feels like a superhero comic book. Yeah. And I mean, I, I've seen some of the artwork with that and, and whatnot. And and though I'm not buying turtles directly like that, no, I, I can appreciate that. Um, I uh, I'm I'm glad they've kind of you know I'm I'm not all that impressed with this new cartoon, but when when they stay kind of like to the original but modernized a little bit, you know, I mean, I'm happy with that. When they do these uh, really out there changes, I'm just like, whatever, I don't I don't care anymore. Uh, it, it, it's well, it's interesting because some characters like Batman, for example, can be super elastic. I mean, I mean, a lot of people like how. I mean, say what you will about it. A lot of people love the, the Adam West Batman, but then you can have this like, like Frank Miller's Dark Knight Returns. That's because you have 75. Well, oh, yeah, years yeah, now, yeah, 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 yeah. Years oh. for that. So, um, with Batman, because they've had so many artists and writers, you you can you can you can be a little bit looser. That being said, I'm very much a traditionalist when it comes to Batman. Uh, that also said, I'm born in the 80s, so I want. Oh, you had you had the best, like arguably the best runs of Batman. I'm yeah. yeah. I'm, the way I consider after Crisis, I think that run up until the New Fifty Two. I, I couldn't I couldn't even be bothered with New Fifty Two. Um, but the 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 you know if we say let's start from year one and that continuity all the way through, you know that was actually pretty solid for Batman and even Superman uh, up until they turned him into Electric Superman with two of them or whatever it was. Um, that whole run there really did have some great artists and some great writers. And uh, for me, there's guys who can draw. Everyone can draw Superman, but there's guys who can capture Superman. And that'd be your Dan Jurgens and your John Bokanov. I'm probably saying his name wrong. Alex Ross. Even though Alex Ross makes him a little bit older than I think he is, like he just seems to look like an old guy, but uh, still he captures that essence of what uh, uh, what he is. You know that. And and John Bokanov is like like a, a modern version of Schuster. Like if you look. Other, some artists descend from other artists. Mm-hmm. He's like a direct descendant from Joe Schuster, you know? Or like how Eric Powell almost seems like a descendant of Will Eisner. Um, stuff like that, right? Where, uh, you know, um, there's artists who really, you know, complement the character, and, and uh, you know, these are guys who were really good for Superman at the time. Well, good comic runs, like, it's funny you mentioned Azrael, like, I'm a big fan of this Wonder Woman run. Cause that was that was actually a very fun fun book. Some some I think for good story or good art, it was like an iconic character like yeah. Superman or Wonder Woman or Spider Man or any of them. You have to find like what piece of you can you bring to that story yeah. because you, you you can't you're obviously whatever you do. I mean it'll it'll be its story for its time. But once you're done, someone else is going to take over and someone's going to do whatever they're going to do with it. But while you're there. Um, you can tell your story. I think some. I think a lot of artists embrace like Dan Jurgens is prob- honestly probably the iconic Superman writer slash illustrator for that time, mm-hmm. right? And where Dennis O'Neill is probably like the Batman icon, like for a classic Batman style. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
Uh, uh, my my favorite run actually for Batman was uh, was when Grant, uh, or sorry, that Alan Grant and uh, and uh, Barry and John, or, or Norm Brayfogel were, were were doing you know basically all their stuff, um, and I was lucky enough to become friends with Norm, who was a fantastic artist, one of my favorite artists on Batman altogether, and uh, so I mean. Uh, um, that, that was a good time yeah. for, for Batman. Well, I, I, it's funny, like, that era, cause I think from 1986 to 1992 was probably DC Comics' best era in terms of creativity. Like, if you look at, if you just look at, at top to bottom. Yeah, yeah George well, I could see it right in that era there, yeah. you know. Yeah, I would, I would say that was, that was, it was a good time for, 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 uh, for DC, um, you know. And, and I wished at the, actually at the time, because I was old enough to do so, I, I, I wished I started branching out with the Dark Horse then. And I didn't until later, and uh, um, because uh, yeah, I mean they were they were they were right around that time starting to spread out fucking uh, uh, Hellboy and and whatnot. And Dark Horse was you know kind of doing their thing, and and their their beginning you know didn't interest me as much as till I kind of you know got into it. Excuse me later. Um, and uh, a few other things. I never did get into Image in the beginning. I'm glad Image is doing what they're doing now with with. Uh, uh, art, or artists and writers doing their own thing. Yeah. Um, I didn't get into their superhero run um, over and above Spawn and maybe Savage Dragon at the time. I couldn't be bothered with any of the other characters, and that's just you know. And, and even now, it's like I couldn't I couldn't be bothered with that early shit. No, it's well. The only one I really enjoyed was Supreme. I did like the idea of Superman as an egomaniac, but that was that was me back in my younger days. But. Uh, no, I mean, no, Image, I, I really dig what Image is doing today a lot. I love their books like Saga and Birthright and stuff like that. They're just good, good, good books. Yeah. So, but back with, with you, so you illustrate comics with that? Or what, what do you um, I do sketch cards for Marvel. So I did uh, five sets with Rittenhouse when they had the, held the property. I've now done five or six sets now with Upper Deck. And, uh, and I have two more sets coming in the mail so um, uh, so I'm going to try and get I got to get all that done this year before I start uh, work up for deployment next year so oh what, do you know where you're heading to? Latvia yeah, yeah. That's, that's the plan oh so if you don't mind my asking what, what do you do in the military? I'm uh, I serve in the uh, uh, I serve in the, the Calgary Highlanders uh, as an infantry mortarman right now so um, we uh, it's a reserve sir, to augment the uh, reg force so when and so basically when our, yeah like our division goes up or whatever then um, hey we need this then we build up that and, and you know um, for whatever task they need, they need for us so yeah so how long are you going to be deployed uh, six seven months I think okay so, so, is, what, so is, that, is that like a normal thing like every every couple of years or so you go out you go off no, it is, if, if if deployments come up, then you know you you um, the reg force, and this is one of the things with uh, difference between uh, reg force and, and reservist. Reservists have the option to go. Yeah. So if I have you know a new kid on the way or something, well then yeah, it's, it's so that, you know, or I have a particular job where uh, you know it's just not feasible, then uh, then I can say no, I I can't do it right now, you know. Um, and, and, and that's the thing, I mean, we are, we are you know, um, we, are, we are soldiers who have lives outside the army. And so, uh, so you have more options that way. Um, I myself, I mean, I have the, the uh, ability or whatever to, to be able to go um, anytime I'm asked. So uh, with this tasking coming up, I was like, yeah, okay, I'll do it. And then for whatever else, um, if something else comes up when I, when I come back, then you know I have the option to say yeah I can do it right, and then I'll work up towards that particular uh, uh, okay. deployment. All right. So how do you get into sketch cards? How do you get into them? Yeah. How did you get into them? I bugged them until they gave me a job. Yeah. Um, I didn't take that. See that hog. I was also doing sketch cards for uh, Cult Stuff, which was another company, and I did uh, several sets with them. One being a World War One set, a Civil War set. I did a Sherlock Holmes thing with them and War of the Worlds, and uh, that actually sounds really fun. They they weren't bad. I mean, it's 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 harder when you haven't read the books. Yeah. So I never did really read any Sherlock Holmes, and I mean, 
my images are like Peter Cushing or whatever it is doing, uh, 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 you know, playing Sherlock Holmes or, or whoever else, right, with that stupid hat. Um, <laughs> so I had, uh, you know, and then yeah. at the time when it came out, there was the Guy Ritchie stuff, which, which yes. to me was a lot more fun. But to read the books, I mean, uh, they're 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 obviously not a big action. You know, no, with the, with the exception of his, thing, yeah. with the exception of his novels, there's not a lot of action in it at all. No, and so I, I uh, see, so yeah, I, I had to actually go back and kind of like study up on Sherlock Holmes a little bit, and I had to uh, same thing for War of the Worlds. I actually had to go and read the book. I never actually read the book, um, and so I had to read that and really kind of tried to get the descriptions of the characters. What do these things fucking look like, right? What is their yep. image of them? Because everyone's going to have something different, and, and I look at other artists' renditions. What did they do? And, you know, just to kind of understand, you know, so. All right. So, so okay, so with the, with the Marvel sketch cards, who are your favorite ones to draw? Uh, I enjoy drawing Wolverine. In fact, uh, every every set, there's one... World War One C-10 Wolverine, which is my unit in the First World War before they became the Calgary Highlanders. They were the Canadian 10th uh, Battalion. And uh, so uh, I will throw one in every set that I do. So it's it's our way of trying to get Marvel to recognize that, yeah, he was a he was a Canadian 10th in the First World War. That's actually really cool, a little bit of t- interesting yeah. to the history there. So, hmm, a couple ways we could go with this. All right, so I think we're gonna. Go, so why did, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask a, a big question. If you don't want to answer it, I understand. But why did you join the military? Are they at least in the cross? So I started. I went to school. I had to go back to school. Um, I spent my childhood, uh, most of it, living on the streets. And so I went back to school. I was about 19, and I had a really wicked social studies teacher um, who got me interested in the First World War. Now, as a comic book junkie, and 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 whatnot. Um, my whole thing was Wolverine in the First World War at first. Um, fast forward a few years, Passchendaele, the film came out by uh, Paul Gross there at the lead. And uh, I would have, I took him Vimy Ridge, you know, and, and you know, just that kind of a thing. And, and I'd like to see like a Band of Brothers series of that. Well, that developed into me, well, Canada, it's it's very difficult to get funding for this kind of stuff. Paul Gross only got, I think, $20 million or something for, for Passchendaele. And he did the best he could with the little bit of funding he had. And um, it's like, well, obviously Canada doesn't support its own shit. So I was like, well, I can draw it and I can write it. You know what I mean? And what sucks is I'm not a writer, so this is what's taking the most length of time is I'm an idea guy or I have ideas or I know how to see a scene, but I don't know how to connect those scenes. So, um, I started working on a graphic novel based on Vimy Ridge, and uh, so I started doing a lot of military art. So then that military art led me to doing rifle shows, like the Easter Rifle Show, stuff like that, I'll, I'll start selling artwork there, and, and it sells. That got a reenactment group that met me, we started chatting, you know, and, and during this time I'd actually tried thinking about joining and whatnot as it was. Um, and the biggest thing holding me back was uh, education, um, the paperwork for the education. Yeah. Um, Edmonton kept sending the wrong shit back to me. Um, but yeah, so so I started kind of a little bit of reenactment stuff and whatnot. And, and like I said, the, 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 the thought had come around a few times because I'd gotten enough information. I started studying the Canadian Tenth. I started studying all the you know all this stuff, and I got interested in the unit. Um, and so. Uh, when I started getting into reenactment, you know, people, because of my personality and, and whatnot, people already thought I'd, I'd already been in, and uh, they said, well, you obviously, you know, you, you know I was like, I'd just sheepishly be like, um, no, you know, because a lot of the guys who were doing this reenactment, some of them had actually either served or were going to go serve and, and, and have. So, um, so yeah, it, uh, Finally, basically, you know, all the, all the dominoes were, were in place or whatever, and, and uh, I, I just said, fuck it, went in, dropped off my paperwork, which I finally got, and I was like, this is the right stuff? He's like, yeah, this is the right stuff. I was like, right, let's do it now. And so, yeah, I signed up now, and uh, yeah, I've been in for just about three years. That sounds like, 
That's actually quite that's an interesting story how your art actually your art of all that got in there. Well, the artwork, yeah, yeah the yeah, artwork yeah. and studying got me into it, and um, I'm 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 youngish enough to do it. Um, I had to wait for my son to be old enough, which was another obstacle. That's I raised him on my own, and so when he was kind of old enough, I could kind of push it even farther. But uh, the other thing was, yeah, getting the proper paperwork, and and that took a long time to do, because Edmonton just kept kind of sending the wrong stuff, right? Yeah, no, that's, that's fair. So, well, good luck with your deployment. Yeah, yeah good luck. Um, beyond all that, okay. So you, you do sketch with, So at this point, you're working on. Are you still working on that graphic novel? Yes. Yes. All right. Slowly but surely, surely. we'll get it out. Oh okay, yeah, we'll get it out. Well, good luck with that too. Thanks. So one last, so I guess one last point here, because you, you do sketch cards, you do, you do, you're going on a graphic novel. Yeah. So just, do you still do like, do you do personal commissions or anything like that, or are you are, are you logged no, in? No, no, no. I do, I do, um, because I'm kind of versatile. I do commissions for uh, artwork, leather work, props, and makeup. And so um, when they come up, you know, you know, if I if uh, uh, I, I I can work it into my time schedule, you know, kind of thing. And I do them. Um, most artwork, like right now, I'm, I just started doing uh, work for uh, a video game, um, uh, doing character design. So it's my first time doing that, and uh, so I'm learning as we go about how kind of how how we're kind of doing that, how that little bit of business works, um, how to even work out pricings and things like that. Like we're you know we're learning how to do this, and. Uh, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing that, and then when the sketch cards come in, I'll just rip through those, get those out. I've I've gone to like uh, on base. We'll be at like an exercise for like three, four weeks, and I'll be sitting there sketching sketch cards because I almost need to have sketch cards every time I, I I I end up on a base. And yeah, so I end up, you know, I go to the, uh, you know, I, I go to the, the 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 junior ranks mess, and, and I'm sitting there drawing sketch cards with beer and or cider or whatever I want to drink and. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, I, I just kind of fit them in when I can and, and just do what I got to do. So, uh, I, I, I'm not going to ask which video game you're doing for, but is it a lot of fun? Because it, 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 it is, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't mind it. Like, right now, um, you know, I, I, uh, I like to play with textures and design and, and just shapes, right? Yeah. And so with, with doing that, um, I get to come up with, uh, it, it, you know, kind of helps me come up with some characters that way right like you know you're just kind of doing sweeping lines and whatnot it's like to get a shape and it's like okay i can play with that i can come up with something here you know so and then uh, i've been watching a lot of these uh david attenborough uh fucking documentaries so you know you're, you're looking under the ocean or whatever the fuck it is he's narrating and uh and you come up with some ideas you know to come up with some aliens and shit like that so that's fun too you know okay well i guess you have a little idea what you're working on so I'm gonna, I guess I'll close the interview portion of this with asking this. Like, is there a particular genre you feel very comfortable in? Because you do a lot. Of, most of my artwork is either you know your pop culture, so or what I consider pop culture, so comic books, right? Yeah. Like I um, not to toot my own horn or anything. I study comic books like 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 a, like a professor kind of would, right? I know artists, all that shit. Like I love comic books. That's my first and foremost love is comic books history, mythology, all that shit like that. Um, and then uh, the next big one was horror movies. I grew up watching a lot of horror movies. And so I loved doing, you know, horror movie type stuff and, 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 and just drawing that kind of stuff, right? And then on top of that is the military stuff. So when people come up to my table, say at a show, that's pretty much what you're going to find. You're going to find mostly comic books, horror, and military. Uh, a little bit of video game stuff. I, I mean, I... I trying to kind of work out an audience here a little bit because I'm finding my audience is leaving as the comic book fan isn't the same as it was when I was a kid. Um, most I find a lot of older gentlemen uh, are, are my buyers. Uh, and these are the old comic book guys, you know, kind of thing. Um, so, you know, the kids ask me for video game stuff. And I don't want to do anime, per se, let's say. Um, I don't do anime or anything. So it's like, well, you know, and, and, and I know a lot of the old game stuff seems to be in that style. I'm not saying all of it is, but there's a lot of it that is and, and whatnot, which means, you know, um, that style, which seems to be, to me, looks the same um, as the next guy. Um, then it comes down to who's a better colorist, you know, or who's a better technical artist. 
um, and, and it comes down to that kind of detail, which some of it's very, very nice. But I just don't want to be, I don't want to be that next guy. I don't want to be another anime guy in a, in a fucking row of anime guys, right? No. You, you want to be you. Right. So how do I come up with my own kind of flavor on some of these, doing, say, Mario or whatever, right? Um, so what I did is I, I had something floating in my head last year. Uh, actually, it might be longer than now. Two years ago. Yeah. Um, it's like a like a Frazetta mixed with Mario. That's an interesting. That's and, an interesting combination, actually. And it turned out pretty good. So yeah. I had Mario on a pile of fucking turtle shells and skulls and shit, and like Princess Peach on his leg, and he's just jacked. And I caked him in tattoos and shit. And, uh, Very you know, it, it looked cool, right? Yeah, it looked yeah. fucking cool. And, uh, and then someone asked, well, why don't you do Zelda? I was like, all right. So I, so I did Link with Zelda and standing over Ganon or whatever, and it was based off another Rosetta painting, um, you know, to give it that kind of, again, that flavor and those colors and whatnot, but it was Link with, with, with Zelda. And then I just finished um, a Donkey Kong one, and I took another, you know, you know, so it's, you know, so for me to, I'm, I'm thinking about doing Metroid now, and it's like, how do I pull that off, right? Um, in this uh, world, so we'll, we'll have to see what I come up with, because um, I don't even know yet. Uh, like I said, I just finished a Donkey Kong one um, with Mario on him, trying to do his thing and, and whatnot. So, and it turned out pretty good too, and it was fun, and, and I gave it that, you know, that that um, again, a very Frazetta feeling and whatnot. Um, but uh, you know, just trying to come up with new ways to you know open the audience and whatnot and you know I get a lot of people come by and go oh that's cool but you know they don't seem to be selling but I still have a lot of fun doing them so at the, at the end of this I mean I mean, yeah you, you want to make your book by the same token you, I mean if you gotta have fun with your art or if you're not if you're not what's the point right so well that's exactly it and, it, and unfortunately um, at my age and I never thought this would happen but I guess it's happening um, you start kind of losing touch with what's today in pop culture yeah, yeah. and and on top of that you can't keep up with everything oh it's you know impossible. I can't keep up with every fucking anime book or whatever Doctor Who and everything else like I have my shit most of my shit's from the 80s but it's you know your Star Wars and, and like I said when I know something I know something you know Indiana Jones Ghostbusters whatever the case is Turtles you know this is the shit that I like this is the shit I love and I'll uh, and, and you you know you can get that shit from me no problem um you know, it, it, I, I can't keep up with everything else, and unfortunately, um, the, the the geek world, the pop culture world, has gotten so big in the last little bit. You know, you, now you have the internet and all this stuff, so you can you can you can get into something directly from Japan or directly from some other fucking country. Um, you know, uh, whereas back then, I mean, my access to outside of the American kind of thing was the little bit of anime there was at the time and like heavy metal which introduced me to all these European artists which I much more enjoy yeah you know um, heavy metal is still like a gas magazine even today so yeah well I think uh, Kevin Eastman owns it yes he does he did I don't no. know if he still does but yeah he owned it so um, so yeah uh, I I uh, you know, you can't you can't keep up with everything, and and I don't want to have to even try. That being said, I still got to play around, and it's like, okay, what can I do, you know, to broaden my audience at all times, right? And to constantly keep that going. And I also don't want to be known as just like, you know, a a, a you know doing what they would, would you know, sometimes uh, hear as fan art and stuff like that. I don't want to be just a fan art artist. No, I want my comics out, and I want you know more stuff out there that. That shows you know, uh, that I diversify uh, as an artist. Uh, also, I think there's just I'm gonna add, say something. It's insanity to try to keep up with everything too. It's okay. it, it's absolutely freaking no, insane. Too yeah, it's too big. So, I mean, you find what you like, you find what you like, and then you, like you, you try to put your own. And even then, I mean, like yeah, Star yeah. Wars can constantly is releasing new shit. So oh, you're oh, trying yeah. to keep up with that too. You know, there was a time when yeah, yeah. like you know, we do Star Wars Trivial Pursuit or something. I'd be you know, like you know pretty fucking solid about it right um and now there's you know you got three four new fucking movies and you know you get rebels and clone wars and all these cartoons now and and uh you, you can't you can't no. keep up with it it's just too hard no no you, you only have so much time in the day and you got important stuff like for you which is your art your, your family and 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 serving I and mean, there's not 
a lot of time for much else. Yeah. I think we have a decent interview here. So to wrap it up, do you know what's coming out next for you? Uh, like I said, I got two more sketch card sets coming in. Yeah. So I'll be doing those. Um, to get this uh, book going. That's hopefully in the next little while. And um, like I said, I'm just doing this uh, video game thing. We'll see where that leads, um, and if that broadens anything out. Um, other than that, um, I don't have any new films coming out, so no makeup stuff for the next little while, as far as I know. Uh, that being said, you can you can see my makeup on uh, One Hit Die Season 2, and uh, it's a film called The Agreement, which was on YouTube, I don't know if it still is, and uh, Don't Walk Amongst the Dead. There's one more. Well, maybe that's it. I don't know. Either way, uh, but yeah, um, you, you can you know you, you can see the makeup in some of those, and they're and they're great little short films. Um, mm, one more to end up. Yeah, I think it ended up almost at the Oscars. There was. Uh, uh, shit, what was the name of it? One second here. Uh, Lost Face. Okay. Um, and on that one, I end up with some really good friends uh, out of the actors and whatnot. So. But uh, yeah, we did. Uh, I did some of the uh, the makeups in there as well. That's really cool. And how can people find you? Um, I have a website, Raven Crow Inc. Uh, I N K. So uh, uh, dot WordPress dot com. So uh, uh, and then Facebook, Raven Crow Inc. Um, as well as Instagram, uh, Twitter. I think under my name, Reed Fisher, Twitter. Um, most of it's just, it's like whatever I post on Instagram goes directly to all these other engines. Um, there, there is a Tumblr page as well, but Tumblr kind of sucks now, so we took all the fun out of it. Yeah, they did. I was going to do a comic book series there. Unfortunately, I then Tumblr evolved and changed, and it was like, eh. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's just the way it goes. And that was my conversation with Reed Fisher. Definitely check out his work as you can, and he's done some really cool stuff. I love the... Uh, Wolverine homages he does to, the, to his air to that Air Force troop. That's just really really badass. Um, Reed, thank you for very much for coming on my show. You are welcome back anytime. Well, I can finally say that the ebook, by and large, is done with Alice Zero. Um, there's still a couple little things left to do, like I put all the legal information on there and 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 my ISBN numbers and stuff like that. But I'm hoping to have Alice Zero up and ready for April 21st. It's my planned release date for it. Um, this week I'm going to be at Creative Inc., which means that next week my episode, the podcast, is going to be late. My my Monday episode will probably air late Monday night, Tuesday morning. Uh, just one time only. It'll be back to its regular Monday schedule after that. Uh, but yeah, like I said, things are moving and I'm moving forward with what I need to do. I can't believe Alice Zero is nearly done. Probably have some other cool announcements in the next week or two too. It's been, it's been moving. I, I like I say, it hasn't gone the way I thought it would. It's a little slower on some levels, but in other ways, it's a lot quicker. And uh, I've been enjoying. Um, thanks for everyone for listening. Uh, it's been definitely a fun ride so far. And that will do it for this edition of Just Joshing. So if you want to support the podcast, you can do so many, many different ways. Let's start with the obvious ones. I have a Patreon page. Patreon.com slash Just Joshing Podcast. You, you can donate there if you'd really like to. That'd be really cool. My uh, Facebook page is Joshua Pentelaresco, author, podcaster. Like it. You'll get all kinds of uh, stuff way before anybody else does, which I think is really, really cool. Um, you could, like book stuff, excerpts of books, things like that. That'll all be there and on the Patreon. For the podcast itself, you can subscribe to it. You know, Podomatic, iTunes, Google Play, um, Spotify, um, anywhere where there's a player, this podcast is available. So definitely click the subscribe, listen to it, review it, tell your friends. That'd be great. My YouTube channel is Joshua Pentelaresco. There are 148 episodes currently in the archive with more being added all the time. Uh, it's definitely been a growing thing. I have my entire first year up now, which is I think is a really cool thing. So my, year one is completely up there for anyone to listen to and I'm working on year two literally right now uh, my books The Watcher Storm Master Wandering God at courtesy of MiraclePublishing.com check them out there Amazon, Kobo wherever books are sold you can pick my books up there 
Alice Zero will be available April 21st. Stay tuned for the order link on that. Beyond all that, thanks for listening, guys. I'll see you guys next time with episode 244. Stay inspired. Have a good one. Josh. Josh.